Thank you very much, Mr. Bajaj, for talking to us here on NDTV. It's always a pleasure to have your views. I'm always happy to be on a Pranoy channel, on a <laughs> channel. Thank you. So, uh, I wanted to have your view as far as the outcome of Bihar election is concerned. How significant is that going to be for this government as far as, the, as, far as their entire reform process is concerned? You know, uh, we'll know by what lunchtime or even earlier the results of the Bihar assembly elections. And unlike many others, I'm no one to forecast, and you have not asked that question very correctly so, as to what will happen. There are people trying to say that it won't have much effect, that state, this is center. I've heard all that, but in totality, I believe, before I come to your question on reform, that it will affect the nation and its political environment the ruling NDA and the people in the opposition, that is the UPA, it cannot but affect it. This is not a municipal corporation election of Kalyan, Dombivali and Kolhapur in or Maharashtra or some panchayat elections in Varanasi. But that is very, very local and does not necessarily reflect how people will vote in an assembly or a parliament election. So, uh, but an assembly election of Bihar, second largest population-wise and parliament-wise state in the country after UP, will have an effect politically, but that's not the question and I'm not a politician to answer that. As far as the reform process is concerned, there are people saying that if, if the NDA wins, BJP wins, uh, reforms will go very fast and if they lose, it may slow down and that's the kind of thing people are saying and I don't share that view. I don't share that view. Uh, uh, in full, that is. Uh, I believe the reforms will continue in this government. They have three and a half years to go in the, in Parliament and in the Lok Sabha, and nobody can touch that. I mean, it has to be a major earthquake over eight in Richter scale to, to have some magic done. Otherwise, even if they keep losing state elections, which I don't see why they should, next year is Tamil Nadu, is Kerala, is Bengal, is Assam, is Puducherry, and the year after is, of course, UP and Punjab. It only means that the kind of strengthening of their position in Raj Sabha will get delayed or will not take place. But there's no reason to believe that will happen. In fact, uh, compared to their existing strength in those assemblies, it will rise, whether they form the government or not. I mean, they can't form the government in other states next year. Right. Uh, the only chance would be probably in uh, Assam, or not in uh, Bengal or this, but they could get more seats. That would help them in the next, not immediately, but the next Rats by elections, 2016 and then 18. Right. But uh, that apart, I don't see why if they lose, they should go slow. I've not understood the logic. It means whatever Mr. Modi was saying, because he was the main campaigner, they will go back on that? Come on. <laughs> no Prime Minister will do that and not this Prime Minister. So I have a feeling they will, I mean they may fine tune things based on the feedback, hmm. but uh, they will go further on reforms. Okay. Maybe they feel that, uh, maybe they will feel by losing that we didn't do enough. Right. Maybe the price rise, the Dalka price rise or things like that. And maybe, I don't know, but that they will have to uh, analyze the results in Bihar. That was the the beef part, for example, hmm. did that affect it or not? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe it did not. Maybe it did. So those things which they feel lost them votes, yeah, that they will correct. But the economic, industrial reform procedure and process will continue. And for all you know, if they lose, they will go faster than if they win, because so, it doesn't affect. It doesn't affect uh, Lok Sabha. Hmm. It does. And even Raj Sabha, even if they lose. If they get more MLAs than today, in the 2016 Rasawa election, they'll be better off. So are you trying to say that if we do see a Delhi-like outcome in Bihar, it's going to be a blessing in disguise, at least for the economy? No, no, I didn't say that. I mean, uh, even losing slightly would be bad. Uh, nobody wants to fight anything. You don't get into a boxing ring, and I used to be a boxing champion of my school, uh, to lose a fight. Right. So you don't fight an election to lose, so that's absolutely wrong, what you are asking. Uh, Everybody fights to win and they want to win. Uh, and in totality, winning is much better, it strengthens them, etc., etc. But, uh, uh, but uh, in life, there is nothing, I believe, which is all good, right. and there is nothing which is all bad. 
So maybe the disaster in Delhi, three out of 70, hmm. would have taught them a lesson. Yeah. What happened? Now, Delhi is a very small state. It's an urbanized electorate, etc., etc. That's not applicable, say, in Bihar right. and all that. But still, why? And I think the PM spoke four times in a small state called Delhi. Right. And then you still lost so badly. So something goes, good comes out of it. And I don't know what it is. I'm not a politician or a political person. Right. Okay? Uh, the ah. minister, the finance minister also today spoke about uh, GST and he said that it's just a question of time, obstructionism, that cannot really be indefinite. What's your sense? Do you really see now confidence building up, at least in India, Inc., as far as GST and land reforms are concerned? There is no land reform. That's out. Right. As far so as the th act is concerned, and he has said that up. himself, that right. goes to the states. Now, what, who states does what? What state has sent a proposal which the central government will approve, the rest will come in time. But what the central government could not do, hmm. though it may be a land matter, is a state matter to some extent, to a large extent, what the states can do, what's in their interest, they need land, they want industrial development, hmm. then even a Congress state will do it. Hmm. Karnataka will do it. I mean, if that is so. But uh, based on what the head, head office says in Delhi, the Congress party's uh, uh, top bosses, maybe they will not do it. Hmm. It all depends. So. Uh, so land reform, as far as uh, Delhi is concerned, is out. They can okay. only hope that it moves well, because as he said himself, without land, hmm. how do you grow? Right. Or how do you have whether highways or this or that, or industrial development or housing or whatever. But as far as GST is concerned, everybody wants it. Hmm. Uh, and it's, I think, I think it was politics that the BJP opposed it earlier. Hmm. They won't agree with what I'm saying. <laughs> and I think it's politics that uh, Congress opposes it now, and they again will mm. not like my saying that. But uh, that's what I feel, and uh, there are now two or three suggestions that the Congress has given, which I think industry likes. Okay. But what they are, are very clearly opportunistic, mm. like that 1% tax right. there, which the manufacturing, I think, states wanted it. Uh, so we don't like it. Okay. It was bad. But I think it's only for two or three years, and yeah. the finance minister and the government had to give in to certain states hmm. who wanted it. Without that, the bill would not have been passed. Absolutely. So there are two or three things like that, uh, which are not ideal, hmm. but which I think the finance minister knows much better than I do. And uh, he's had to accept to get all the majority, more than 50% states on board. Hmm. But I have only a question, basically, that I hope the, the whatever information technology set up, especially hmm. in the states and the center, but especially in states that is required. I think he mentioned that's very much in place. We are absolutely ready. Uh, as soon as we get the right. numbers, we are ready to implement right. GST. And I hope he's right, okay. because uh, I don't know that answer, except that I've heard from some very reliable people, hmm. senior people, ki in some states that's not right. Okay. It's not ready. And if they are not ready, then, and though it's been People have been working on it for years. Hmm. But uh, if they are not ready, then it can cause a lot of problems. Okay. And the other is that uh, I don't know the details. I'm not an expert on GST. The CII is, uh, knows much more about it. Uh, Mr. Chandrajit Banerjee, the Director General, and others. But uh, you see, for the same product or service, the tax rate must be the same all over the country. That's the first principle of GST. Right. So it's one country, hmm. like EU, and not 28 countries like we are today. Plus, the cascading effect must go down hmm. or reduce or ultimately become zero. Hmm. So these are the two major things. But you say if the rate is 20 percent, I don't know what it is. I don't think 26, 27, that's crazy. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, much less than 17, 18, the revenue neutrality will suffer and the government revenue may suffer. So it will be between 18 to 20 percent. Okay. So all those products which are much lower rate, hmm. they will come to that rate? Hmm. I don't know. because. Again, for each item, the rate, I repeat, all in every state should be the same. Right. They may say petroleum at the moment or alcohol out, but again for a couple of years. Mm. Otherwise, that completely destroys the sanctity of the GST as far as I know it. And I repeat, I'm not an expert on GST, only as an industrialist, I'm speaking. But uh, yes, uh, a BMW or a Mercedes car, as I mentioned just now to someone else, uh, and a rubber chapel rubber chapel, what we call bathroom slippers or which even the poor guy wears, it costs 30, 40 rupees or whatever hmm. and that costs God knows how much, I don't know. I can't buy, I don't buy <laughs> BMWs. Uh, uh, 
Should it have the same rate? Hmm. It's a question mark. And so that is what I don't know what has been decided. Okay. Uh, but you're expecting the rate to be around 18 to 20 percent. Yeah, but that's a minor point. That's the important only that it's not 26. Right. And I know it can't be below 16. Absolutely. That's my reading. Hmm. So 18 to 20 percent. But that is one rate for everything? Hmm. No. For BMW and a bathroom slipper hmm. Hmm. or ordinary soap or life boy soap hmm. or whatever. So there will have to be something like at least, I repeat, same rate for the same product, same product all over the country. Right. But three rates, one zero rated. Hmm. I think there are some. So there, we need different baskets uh, for different types of products. Medicines, you know, right. zero rated. Right. Luxury goods, everything, everything else that say 20 percent. Right. And something around 10 percent, 8 percent. So their revenue neutrality remains, hmm. but there has to be a difference between what the very rich buy. Hmm and what the middle class and the poor people buy. Right. Uh, I also wanted to have, I want to ask you that question that do you think GST will see the light of the day in 2016? Because you said world will not really collapse if it doesn't happen in 2016. Last time when I had spoken to you about it. Uh, the finance minister today said that corporate sector over borrowed and that's the reason why they are stretched at this point in time. Their balance sheets are absolutely stressed. What's your opinion he didn't say on that. that? He said that. Of he course. didn't say that. <laughs> Please let me answer. Don't okay. interrupt. I heard what you said. Right. And I was sitting in the front row and I heard what he said. Okay. There's a word there called some. All right. That's what he said. That's what he meant. And I know what his views are. Okay. So how... My group, which is among the top 10 in the country in manufacturing sector, uh, my five companies, Bajaj Auto included, hmm. or Bajaj Holding, Bajaj Finance, the two insurance, are zero debt companies. Hmm. Nobody in the country can say that we, uh, all corporates are high debt. So those so some let's be very corporates, clear. So some there corporates. are a large number of large corporates, most of them good friends of mine, Right. most of them highly competent, but they got into this trap. Right. Why? I don't know. I believe they were greedy. I want to buy everything under the sun. Hmm. I want to become number one. Hmm. I want to buy abroad. I want to buy in India. I want to buy this. I don't have the money, so I borrow. And some banks lent them wrongly. Right. They shouldn't have lent them. And now they are becoming willful defaulters. Hmm. Hmm. Now each case is different. One is for no fault of theirs. Hmm. If they didn't get coal, if they didn't get this, and that's why the power unit is not functioning, if that's the reason, <coughs> understandable. But if there's funny things, if there's siphoning off, if there's diversion of funds hmm. to their private companies, other companies, I won't take names, then those guys are willful defaulters, they are non-cooperative, and they must be punished. Hmm. There are bad politicians, corrupt politicians, and there are bad industrialists and corrupt industrialists. Hmm. Hmm. The good has to be encouraged, and the bad has to be discouraged and punished. Otherwise, we can't move forward. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir. Thank you very much.